Hi everyone, it's Mr. Sinti, and I'd like to talk to you today about chromosomal disorders. And as it turns out, um, recessive alleles, mutations, um, these sorts of um, disorders are only one type of things that can go wrong in the cell. One, unfortunately, one of the, the more common things that can happen is when gametes are forming, um, in other words, meiosis is, uh, is going on, or if cells are dividing, mitosis. One of the key events of mitosis and meiosis is that the chromosomes segregate during that process. You can see here that they're glowing fluorescent blue, and then the spindle fibers are, are shown here in yellow, pulling them apart. Can you imagine what would go wrong if the chromosomes didn't segre segregate properly during meiosis or mitosis, it'd be, a, it'd be a trouble. And so, unfortunately, this is our conversation uh, today, which is chromosomal disorders. And so I want to start off with, um, so, with a review of something uh, that we all know about, which is a you know, normal process of mitosis and meiosis. Here's a typical cell. Here you can see the nucleus. It's just coming out of interphase. You can start to see the chromosomes are, are forming. And as you can see, I'll just sort of speed it up a little bit. Do you notice how the nuclear membrane disappears? The chromosomes are getting thicker and condensing. And then this is prophase. And then the chromosomes are pulled to the true equator of the cell, or metaphase. Do you see that? Metaphase. And then the spindle fiber is not shown pull either the chromosomes or the chromatids, depending if it's mitosis or meiosis, pull them apart perfectly to both sides of the cell, new nucleus begins to form, and then the cell's ready to divide cytokinesis. You see how that works? And that's, that's great. That's the way it should. But how would you like it if something like this were to occur? And let me see if I can make that a little bit larger so you can see it better. How would you like it if, let me go back here. It all starts off great. Here's the nucleus, here's the chromosomes forming. And let me sort of fast forward it a little bit like this. And you'll notice as this plays out, you'll notice how the chromosomes are supposed to line up in the center like they normally do. Let's say this is during meiosis. And what, what normally occurs, let me back it up a little bit, what normally is supposed to occur during meiosis is that the, let me see if I can animate this on top of it. What this really is is one homologous chromosome and the other homologous chromosome from both parents form this structure called the tetrad, they synapse, and they come to the center. And then what's, what's supposed to then happen is one homologous pair goes this way and the other homologous pair goes that way during anaphase one. That's normal. But check this out. What's happening is, do you notice how not all the chromosomes are in the true equator? There's something happening over here. Check this out. And so do you notice how there are some extra chromosomes over here? That's, that's big trouble. Because what's going to happen is when the cells divide, I mean during anaphase, where the chromosomes are being pulled apart, there's going to be some extra chromosomes over at one side. So those didn't separate. This is called non-disjunction. And as a result of non-disjunction, you're going to have more chromosomes on this side of the cell and not enough on that side of the cell. And that's going to result in some, some difficulties for the cell. And so that's what our conversation is going to be about today. And so let's get right into that. Uh, so this is a picture again of anaphase, and that's generally when this problem occurs. And so remember that in the nucleus, this is a, a, an awesome picture showing that each of the homologous pairs have been stained their own color, so you can pair them up in the karyotype. Do you notice here? You can look down at the sex chromosomes and notice that it's a female XX. And so what's supposed to occur during meiosis, the making of gametes, is that the homologous chromosomes are spo supposed to se separate. But if they don't separate, that's going to cause some genetic disorders. And so this can occur during meiosis. And so let's talk about that. So if it happens during meiosis 1, this, this event where the chromosomes do not segregate properly is called non-disjunction. So they're, so they're not disjuncting 
They're not separating, non-disjunction. And so what's happening is both pairs are going over to one side. And so that's going to result in this cell not having that, that particular chromosome. They may have all the other ones, but they're just going to be missing. This one has less, and this one has more. And so as a result of meiosis two, you're, instead of getting a, just an ordinary N cell, N cell, N cell, N cell, it's going to be N plus an extra, N plus an extra chromatid, and then this is N minus, N minus. So if this is human, um, this is a human cell, this would be, uh, instead of it being 20, whoops, instead of it being 23, this would be, if you're following this, this, this would be a cell that has 24, a cell with 24, and this one would be, instead of 23, it would be 22 and 22. And you're like, wow, this could be a problem. Well, yeah, especially because this is just maybe one parent. And then if this gets fertilized, then the child will have, instead of 46 chromosomes, this child will have, provided the other parent is normal, will have 45. And then if this gamete gets fertilized, the child will have 47. And so they can have one more or one less. Now what's interesting is this non-disjunction can occur during meiosis 1. And if it occurs during meiosis 1, let me ask you this question. What's worse? If non-disjunction, which is the non-separating of, of, the, of the chromosomes, is it worse if it happens during anaphase 1 or if it's worse during, if it happens during anaphase 2. Hmm. Seems like both would be a problem. But check this out. If it occurred during meiosis 1, as you can see here, all the cells would be abnormal. But over here, if anaphase 1 occurs, fine. In other words, you get haploid cells, but then during meiosis 2, just simply the sisters didn't separate. Then you would still have this abnormal 1 extra, 1 minus, but these two would be normal. So how do you like that? Maybe non-disjunction occurs and just by luck, good luck, and random fertilization, you get normal gametes and you're able to get away with that and your child's born uh, normal as a result. So non-disjunction occurs um, as a result of the mitotic spindle having a problem. And, you know, that can happen. You know, the chromosomes are sort of like little kids all running around and, and, and you know, the truth is, let me go back up, up to this slide. If I were to ask you, like, which chromosomes do you think would have the most likely chance of not being pulled apart properly during anaphase? You're like, well, I don't know. You might say perhaps the smallest chromosomes at all. Like, in other words, these socks, in terms of a dryer, these are the socks that always seem to get lost, or they're the ones that get clinging to like a beach towel. The larger ones generally don't have problems, but they can. So it could be that the first pair has a problem or the second pair has a problem. And so there's many disorders. There's like having an extra chromosome one pair or minus chromosome one pair, an extra chromosome two pair or a minus chromosome two pair. And so this is what can happen. And so here's a, another example of what occurs during anaphase 1, as you can see here, non-disjunction. or it, Oh, I'm sorry. This is an example of non-disjunction during anaphase 2. And so it results in only two abnormal uh, gametes. And so the consequences of this are if an extra piece of chromosome goes over to a gamete, instead of having two when it comes together during uh, fertilization, you'll have three pieces of DNA, and so it's known as trisomy. And if you had one of those minus cells get fertilized, it would be known as monosomy. So both an extra chromosome is trouble, and one less chromosome is trouble. And so a term that geneticists like to describe in an offspring that has an abnormal chromosome number, and it's usually either, you know, the normal's 46, it's normally either abnormal would be 47 or abnormal would be 45. Those individuals are known as aneuploidy or abnormal chromosome. And it's like, how does that happen? It happens because of meiotic, in other words, trouble during meiosis, meiotic non-disjunction. And so 
Here again is a nice schematic showing that what can happen during meiosis 1. Meiosis 1 is really trouble, and then meiosis 2 is not as bad. What's interesting is if, if you're following this closely, you're like, well, geez, I thought meiosis 2 was the same thing as mitosis. So couldn't this ever occur during mitosis? Can't there ever be a problem with the chromosomes? In other words, the sisters not separating during mitosis. It could happen. But we have trillions of cells, and if that happens, frankly, it doesn't matter if a few cells die. But if this were to occur, say everything is normal, say it's normal, and if this were to occur when the embryo is just starting to grow during embryonic development in an early embryonic cell stage, if there was a mitosis problem, it can result in, in difficulty. And so, as you can see here, check this out. If this egg right here, which is uh, has one extra chromosome, fertilizes with this normal sperm, what it's going to result in is an abnormal zygote. This, this is, instead of it just being n plus n makes 2n, it's n, 2n plus 1. So this individual would have, if it was a human, 47 chromosomes. This would be trisomy, an extra chromosome. See, there's two uh, reds when they're supposed to just be one right there. And so trisomy cells have one extra. Monosomy has one minus. And usually these disorders, you could look this up on, on, uh, on the Internet. You can look at monosomic whatever or trisomic whatever chromosome you're interested in. And it, 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 there's usually a description of all sort of difficulties with regards to phenotype. It could be, it could range from something that is kind of minor to something that's more severe. As you look down at this karyotype, I can ask you if you could see it closely, you're like, well, is this a, a normal child or is there something wrong with this child? It's a, it seems like everything's good. Two chromosomes, two chromosomes, cruising along, and you're like, like uh-oh. Here's a girl. Okay, that's one thing. But, uh oh look at this. The 21st pair, it's not a pair. There's actually an extra chromosome. So this would be trisomy 21, karyotype. This would be trouble. You know, how would you know this if, if, you're, if you're pregnant? Well, you would have amniocentesis, and you would look at this, and then you'd say, well, what is this? Well, this is actually one of the most popular, or most common, I should say, uh, genetic disorders. Trisomy 21 is commonly known as Down syndrome. And so there's going to be issue with this. And like why does it happen? Why is it most common? Down syndrome, trisomy 21. Well like I was saying before, it's most common because as it turns out, do you notice how the chromosomes are, are named in descending order of size? Well when geneticists were originally determining which was first, second, third pair, they actually kind of botched this up a little bit, and they thought the 22nd pair was the smallest, when in fact the 21st pair is the, really the smallest. So it's most common because these small chromosomes sometimes get lost in anaphase, and there's, and there's trouble, which is non-disjunction. And that occurs during anaphase. So this is what's happening. So aneuploidy can result from problems in meiosis, but it can even be a problem in mitosis. And if it happens, I mentioned this before, if it happens early on, it could actually affect a large number of cells. And so it will have more um, a substantial effect on the organism. Now, sadly to say, Down syndrome um, is, I would say, you know, I'm not sure if, if, if this makes you nervous or not, but it affects on average one in every 700 children in the United States. And you're like, well, uh, gee, that's kind of common. Um, but fortunately, it's not that much, not that common. And so this is just sort of an average, one in every 700. What, when doctors started to really look at this closely, they started to correlate when a mother was having Down syndrome child with the age of the mother. And as it turns out, this is what I find very interesting and somewhat dis disturbing, is that it turns out that a down, this is a picture of a Down syndrome girl here. Do you see here, her karyotype seems to be normal. These are chromosomes. And you look down here and you're like, oh God, this is terrible. This is trisomic 21. So this is a Down syndrome baby. You're like, as it turns out that 
one of the problems of this is they started making a correlation between, well, take a look at this graph right here. What do you see? Like how often a, a mother has a Down syndrome baby is related to, do you notice here that this is the mother's age? When a mother's very young, it's very, very, very rare, like one in every 1,000. But as the mother gets older, right here, and then again, if you go get too old, it's menopause. You're not going to be able to produce any eggs at all. Menstruation stops. But as it turns out, as the mother is older, there seems to be a, a correlation between the occurrence of Down syndrome and the mother's age. And so, you know, why is that? I mean, scientists don't really know for sure, but it might be the fact that um, you may recall this from a previous discussion is that meiosis in, in females occurs, it's already occurring, uh, it's already occurred, I should say, in, in your body if you're female, if you're watching this, in your ovaries. And so it's those chromosomes are sort of arrested for many decades. And um, just simply said that sometimes trouble can, can occur as a result of it. It's not to say that that you can have non-disjunction in the making of sperm. It could happen. But sperm are produced sort of on a daily basis in male, and so they're a little bit fresher. And so this is a consideration. If you're going to have a child, when it is that you're going to have it. And a doctor would obviously advise you, if you went in and you decided to have a baby and you're getting up there in age, the doctor might, the OBGYN, might suggest that you have an amniocentesis to sort of see what, if there's any trouble uh, with the chromosomes of the fetus. And so Down syndrome is not the only one, and I'm not going to mention every genetic disorder, but I'll mention a few other fairly common ones. Take a look at this. Here's an individual that has three chromosomes. That's not normal. They're, this is trisomic, but look, look at this. They're X, X, and Y. So they're genetically male, they have the SRY gene here, but they have an extra X chromosome, and this is known as Klinefelter syndrome. A lot of these disorders have names after the individuals that first discovered it or a famous person that had it. And so um, each has its sort of nor different phenotypes, and you can look that up. Um, this is uh, sometimes an individual can have um, XYY. And if they have XYY, they tend to be a little bit taller. Um, there was, and let me go back to that. Interesting uh, studies were conducted once upon a time in prisons. You know, I don't know if you know this, but the predominant gender in most prisons are male. <laughs> Just saying that they tend to be a little bit more criminal-minded. Uh, and a study was conducted to see whether or not that there was a genetic basis to criminal behavior, and so they started uh, sampling chromosomes of prisoners to see whether or not they had something abnormal, and one study suggested that there seemed to be a high frequency of individuals in prisons that were X, Y, Y. Y, I'm not sure, maybe there's an increase in testosterone, I'm not sure. So uh, here's a male uh, producing sperm uh, right here, and as you can see, um, one cell is receiving the X and the other one is receiving the Y. You can have all sorts of things. You can have during a female, can have non-disjunction and produce three X's, so trisomy X. And so you can have something called monosomy X as well, or that's known as Turner syndrome. In other words, um, this cell gets fertilized and so it has one X and nothing else. And so that would be a female, but it would be abnormal. It would be Turner syndrome. And so just wanted to introduce you to some of these genetic disorders. And then um, finally, what I want to say is it's not always just the chromosomes that don't segregate properly during anaphase. In other words, non-disjunction. Sometimes there could be like a part of the chromosome could break off. And there can be de deletions. There can be uh, big insertions. There could be portions of chromosomes that actually break apart and go on to other chromosomes. Sometimes a whole chromosome could invert itself and, and therefore it would be trouble because the genetic code uh, upside down is not read correctly. And so there could be a, a lot of difficulties that can occur. 
And one of the more common ones where there's a structural problem, where there's actually a, a deletion in a particular chromosome, is that it's, it tends to happen on chromosome 5. I'm not sure why. This is, it, the syndrome is called, it's French, so I'm probably going to mispronounce this. It's cri uh, cha <laughs> Sorry about that. But its translation is the cry of the cat. So that's really sad. So small, the individuals are born, and they're, they're mentally slow, and they have a small head, and they tend to cry more, more loudly and more distressfully than a normal baby would, uh, would cry. And it's almost as if you're stepping on the tail of a cat. And so this is a real tragedy. So you could look at a, the karyotype, and you can see, well, it looks everything looks normal. They have 46 chromosomes. I don't see what the problem is. Do you see over here, um, I'm not sure if you can, my face is probably blocking it, but there's a portion of chromosome 5 that is missing in this, in this karyotype. So these are things that can go wrong um, chromosomally in inheritance. It's a sad conversation, but, um, and there isn't much that anyone can do about it. And, th and that's, you know, that's one thing, but awareness and education about it is, is most important. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you learned a little bit about chromosomal disorders. Thanks for watching.